Hi everybody, it's Mrs. Cupid. It is Wednesday, uh, April 15th, 2020. I hope everybody is doing well and I miss you guys all so much, especially my kiddos at Lorraine Elementary School in second grade. Um, but I did wanna share with you guys our next read aloud. And we, in second grade in my classroom, read a book very similar to this one in the fall called The Haunted Library. And so I grabbed this one from our classroom and it's another story. And some of you might have even gotten this from our library, um, but this one's called The Haunted Library, The Ghost at the Movie Theater. And this one again is by Dory Hillstad Butler. So boys and girls, I thought we would give this book a try and I'll just simply read one chapter at a time. And then that way we can talk about it the next time we have a meet, um, a Google meet together. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. And I bet you'll see some familiar characters and hear about them. And our first chapter is called, chapter one, A Big Favor. So we'll go ahead and get started. And guys, you can even be like me. I'm super comfy on my couch right now with my big comfy blanket. Um, so I hope you guys are relaxed and can listen and enjoy. You guys, come quick, little John shouted as he swam into Claire's living room. You won't believe what Finn is doing. It was the middle of the night. Kaz, Cosmo, Mom, Pops, Grandma, and Grandpa had the TV on, but they weren't paying much attention to it. They had it on while they waited for Claire to wake up. The ghosts had a big favor to ask of Claire. Kaz groaned. What's Finn doing? He asked his younger brother, little John. Finn was Kaz and Little John's big brother. Back when the ghosts lived in the old schoolhouse, Finn liked to scare his brothers by putting an arm, leg, or his head through the outside wall. One day, he pushed his head too far through the wall and he got stuck in the outside. Grandma and Grandpa tried to rescue him, but the wind blew them all away. Well, a few months later, some solids came and tore down the old schoolhouse. Kaz and the rest of his family were forced into the outside. The wind blew them away too. It blew Kaz to the library where he met Claire, the solid girl who lives above the library with her parents and grandma. And boys and girls, that's what we remember from our last story that we read in the fall. We learned about Claire and Kaz. Kaz didn't think he'd ever see the rest of his family again, but he and Claire found Cosmo when they were searching for a ghost in an attic. Little John had gotten himself returned to the library inside a book. The three of them found Grandma and Grandpa at a nursing home. They found Mom and Pops at a, at a girl named Margaret's house. And just yesterday, they found Finn at a boy named Eli's house. You have to see what Finn's doing, Little John said. He's in Claire's room. Kaz sighed. Whatever Finn was doing in Claire's room in the middle of the night, it couldn't be good. The ghost swam down the hall and through Claire's bedroom door. Claire was sound asleep on her bed and Finn was braiding her hair to the bedpost. Kaz gasped, Finn? Woof, woof, Cosmo barked at Finn while Mom, Pops, Grandma, and Grandpa shook their heads in disapproval. You're such a tattletale, little John, Finn said. Come on, Finn, Kaz said, that's not very nice. All of a sudden, Claire jerked awake and she tried to sit up but couldn't. What in the, she said, her fingers followed her hair all the way down to the bedpost. And here's the picture of him braiding her hair. Not so nice. Who did this, she asked the, she asked the ghosts. Her gaze settled on Finn and she made a face at him. Aw, oh, you can't take a joke, Finn asked. He tried to help Claire unbraid her hair, but she didn't want his help. She shoved her hand through his chest. Way to go, Finn, little John said. Claire may not want to do us that favor now. Well, what favor, Claire asked as her hair came free from the bedpost. She can't do it in the middle of the night, Kaz said. Go back to sleep, Claire. We'll ask you in the morning. Maybe by then she will have forgotten what Finn did to her hair. Claire turned on her bedside lamp. Well, I'm awake now, she said, combing her hair with her fingers. Well, go ahead and ask. The ghosts looked at one another. Mom motioned for Kaz to do the asking. Well, Kaz wafted closer to Claire. You know how there's this little problem between our family and Beckett? Well, Beckett was the other ghost who lived at the library. For some reason, Mom, Grandmom, and Grandpop never wanted to be in the same room with Beckett. 
so they made a deal. Beckett would stay in the library and the other ghosts would stay in Claire's apartment. Tonight, Mom, Grandma, and Grandpa finally told Kaz, Finn, and Little John why there was a problem between Beckett and their family. So here's a picture of Kaz talking to Claire. And if you guys remember Beckett, he was the old man ghost that we saw in the library from the last book. And now Kaz was explaining to Claire, when our mom and Beckett were young ghosts, Beckett lived with her family for a while, he began. He did, Claire said, hugging her knees to her chest. Well, yes, Kaz said. You know how we've never seen Beckett glow? Little John couldn't wait for Kaz to finish telling the story. Beckett doesn't glow blue like we do, he blurted. He glows red. Really? Claire gasped at the ghosts. Well, I've never heard of a ghost who glows red. Wait, there's more, Kaz said. Our mom had a little brother named Dave. And one day Beckett glowed and his red glow scared Dave so bad that he jumped right through the wall of their haunt and the wind blew him away. And they haven't seen him since. Well, Finn picked up the story from there. Remember when I said I was at the movie theater before I was at Eli's house? Well, there's a ghost named Dave there. We want you to take us to the movie theater so that we can find out if he's mom's long lost brother. Well, maybe if we find Dave, then you guys will forgive Beckett for what happened and we can all be friends, Kaz said to his mom and grandparents. Maybe, grandma and grandpa said, but they made no promises. Claire thought about the situation. Okay, she said, stifling a yawn. <sighs> Tomorrow's Saturday. I think the movie theater opens at one. How about we go right after lunch? Well, then she lay down, pulled the covers over her head, and went back to sleep. Everyone in Kaz's family wanted to go to the movie theater. That was eight ghosts, including Cosmo. Well, unfortunately, Claire's water bottle only held four ghosts comfortably. Five if they shrank extra small and squished together. Well, I don't have to go if there isn't room, Pop said. Yeah, me either, Kaz said. He thought Finn should go because Finn was the one who knew the ghost at the movie theater. And mom and grandma and grandpa should go because Uncle Dave was mom's brother and grandma and grandpa's son. Little John, Pops, and I could stay here with Cosmo, Kaz said as he put his arm around little John. Woof, woof, Cosmo barked. No, Kaz, Claire said. You have to come. We're C&K detectives. We're a team. Little John ducked out from under the Kaz's arm. I'm C&K detectives too, he said, even though his name didn't start with a C or a K. Well, I've helped you solve cases. I want to see if Finn's friend is our Uncle Dave too. Well, you should all come, Claire said. I'll find something big enough to hold you all. The ghosts followed Claire into the kitchen. She scanned the counters and opened the fridge. How about this, she said, reaching for an almost empty bottle of orange juice. She finished what was left, then rinsed the bottle in the sink. Perfect, Kaz said as he grabbed his dog. The ghost shrank down, down, down and passed through the bottle. So here's a picture of Claire with the orange juice bottle that's right here. And all of the ghosts right here are going to shrink down, 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 down. So they all fit inside that orange juice jug right there. And that's how she's going to carry them all to the movie theater. I'm going to the movies, Claire called to her family. Claire's mom poked her head out of her office. What are you going to see, she asked. Claire's parents were detectives too, just like Claire and Kaz. But Claire's parents solved regular mysteries. And Claire and Kaz, well, they solved ghostly mysteries. I don't know, whatever's showing, Claire said with a shrug. I'm only going because there's a ghost at the movie theater and we want to find out if it's Kaz's long lost uncle. I've got his whole family in here. She tapped the orange juice bottle. Even though Claire's mom couldn't see Kaz and his family, she knew all about them. So did Claire's dad and grandma Karen. In fact, Claire's mom and grandma could see ghosts when they were Claire's age too. But Claire's dad has never been able to see ghosts. Okay, but be back in time for dinner, her mom said. I will, Claire promised. The movie theater was downtown, right in the middle of a block. There was a toy store on one side of the theater and a Mexican restaurant on the other. Claire went inside the theater and got in line to buy a ticket for the movie. So here's a picture of the movie theater. And can you guys see the movie that is being shown? There it is right there. 
And if you can read it, it says the monster of the lake. And I guess there's another movie called Love is All. Hey, look, it's Conrad, Jesse, and George, Finn said as he passed through the bottle. The rest of the family had no idea who Conrad, Jesse, and George were, but they followed Finn through the bottle and across the large open room. They saw three new ghosts hovering above a brightly lit snack counter where some solid people were buying popcorn. That's my favorite. Two of the ghosts were teenagers, a boy and a girl. They were holding hands and looking at each other all googly-eyed. The other ghost was younger. Not as young as little John, but younger than Kaz. The three ghosts turned. Finn, they shrieked. They swam over and threw their arms around Finn. Grandpa cleared his throat. <clears throat> Finn, are you going to introduce us to your friends? Oh, sorry, Finn said, and he gestured toward the teenagers. This is Jesse and Conrad, the little ones, George. Guys, this is my mom and dad, my grandparents, my brothers, Kaz and little John, and my dog, Cosmo. Woof, woof, Cosmo barked. Aw, Jesse said, you found your family. Cool, Conrad said, shaking hands with everyone. Where's Dave? Mom asked, looking all around. You know Dave? George asked as Conrad and Jesse exchanged a look. What? Finn said. What's that look? Dude, Conrad said in a low voice as Claire joined the crowd of ghosts. I hate to break it to you, but Dave's gone. So we are going to stop right there at the end of chapter one. And just to preview the next chapter title, it will be chapter two, Where is Dave? So if you remember, Dave is Kaz's uncle, and that's who we're going to try to figure out where he is. So Claire and Kaz are on the case, and I hope you guys enjoyed our first chapter of our next Read Aloud together. And I look forward to seeing what you guys and hearing what you guys think about our new book. All right, guys, I hope you enjoy your evening and I will see you soon. All right, guys, have a good night.